Hey guys, welcome back to the I Press Play podcast. Today we're going to be talking about Yasiel Puig and his antics. Uh, if you don't know, I'll give you a brief back ba- background about Yasiel Puig. He was a he's a Cuban defector. Um, he got politi- political asylum in Mexico and then um, emigrated to the United States within the last two or three years. Uh, he signed a, I think, $70 million contract with the Los Angeles Dodgers, and this is his rookie year. And the big controversy is over a fly ball to right field in the NLCS where he, instead of running to first base, decided to throw up his arms and celebrate like it was a home run. Uh, It didn't go out, but he still ended up with a stand-up triple. Right, and, you know, I saw the play, and first of all, before I get into my my, my take on it, um, it was actually $42 million, but um, still a lot of money. But this man hit the ball what for what most people would have struggled to get a double out of this. This man swung at the ball, hit it, bounced off the fence. He stared at it for a good two seconds with his arm up in the air. Then he realized, oh, the ball's not going out, so he decided to run, which this man, what I saw, his speed, the power combination and everything, he could play either linebacker or, or tight end in the NFL with no problem. This man ran. Like unlike anything I've seen before, and still ended up with a stand-up triple with a ball that, quite frankly, most guys would have struggled to get a double on. He's just a freak of nature, a phenomenal athlete, and he knows it. He understands that he's got those tools, and he knows how to use them. Now, the problem that he has is that he's very immature. I mean, keep in mind, he's only 22 years old. People forget that he's still a, a kid, so to speak. He's 22 years old, according to his birth certificate. That, that is true. Uh, that's... Which, yes, he very well could be older than that. We we never know. But Yasiel, the, the, the problem with Yasiel is that in the culture that he comes from, um, and Cubans are very demonstrative. They're very loud. Um, and it's not a knock on them. It's, it's just how they are. It's just their culture. And he's, you know, he's very much Cuban. So, you know, sometimes he's very demonstrative. And I don't think he has bad intentions when – he flings his arm up in the air and, and, and he, sh- so to speak, shows off because that's exactly what he's doing. He's showing off. But at the same time, he's playing in L.A. It's Tinseltown. It's, you know, you, you're supposed to show off in L.A. You're supposed to be a big deal in L.A. And he's trying his best to, uh, to fit in with that crowd. And I think, I think Yasiel, as time progresses, he will tone down his antics because he'll start rubbing off a lot of people the wrong way. He already has. Beltran came out and has some some very interesting uh, comments in regards to, to Yasiel and, and, and what he did there. But I think it's good for baseball, actually. I think it brings a new side of baseball. Baseball is usually uh, thought of as being a little bit boring and not enough emotion is shown. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree and disagree with you. I'm going to... I disagree with you with the fact that he sh- he's going to have to tone it down because he's pissing people off. Uh, I don't think he should tone it down at all. Baseball needs this. Watching baseball right now, uh, especially as a Mets fan, could be very boring at times. If the Mets had Yasiel Puig or if any team had Yasiel Puig showing this kind of emotion, uh, they should they should sign him to a $100 million contract. They should. He brings people to the ballpark. He's exciting. And if Beltran doesn't care... Uh, if Bel, if excuse me, if Beltron does care, uh, tell his pitchers to man up and strike him out. Uh, because if if he's hitting the ball, he should uh, he should do whatever he wants. Because that was a rocket, and unfortunately they're going to lose the series. But I have no problem with Yasiel Puig celebrating. He's 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 a kid. He should do whatever he wants. And it's not like he's punching someone. He's not he's not fighting anyone. He's enjoying himself. And I wish I wish I was 22 making uh, $47 million over five years or six years or something like that. I'd, I'd be just as excited as he is. Yeah, and, you know, quite frankly, you know, if 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 I'm a pitcher and I'm facing Yasiel Puig, I'm not so sure I want to take him on. I'm not so sure I want to plunk him because I think he, the, I think he might break the ball in half. Oh, he's a beast. Frankly, he's, he's an animal. Yeah. He's an absolute beast, unlike anything we've seen before, really. <clears throat> the only guy that comes to mind, and this was well before my time to, to compare him to, to someone, 
would be Bo Jackson. Uh, he, he reminds me a lot of Bo Jackson. And frankly, if Bo Jackson played in the NFL, I, I think Chatsy Puig could play in the NFL. Uh, but, I mean, Vin, Vin Scully did call him, like a, I think he called him a Colt or a Young Buck or something like that. Only, only Vin Scully could pull that off. But, I mean, I, I see the resemblance. I mean, they're, they're both... They they run probably the same speed a Colt and him. I mean it's unbelievable watching him play and it's. I mean it's very exciting. I, yeah, I've stayed up late numerous times just to see Asio Puig you know, in those first uh, fifty games that they won. Like oh, every absolutely, game. and and seeing him run those bases the other day, that's what it really hit me. How fast the man is! I mean he's a big guy. He weighs he probably weighs two hundred and forty two hundred fifty pounds, and I mean I, to use an NFL analogy, we don't know how fast his forty time is, but. It's got to be pretty fast. He had a stand-up triple out of that ball. I'm still yeah, he, he had a stand-up triple. The ball did bounce away from Beltron after it dented the wall. But I mean, I think, I think he trotted three quarters of trotted three quarters of the way down to first base. So he pretty much just turned on the Jets once hitting first base and and could have crawled to third. I mean, there was no shot of him getting getting uh, him getting thrown out. Do you think that Yasiel Puig will? keep this up next year, meaning his production, not so much his antics. I think the antics will stay, but the production, do you think that he maintains it? What What do you think? I mean, I think he ended the year with some, he, he ended the year in the 300s, right? I'm, I don't know what his... He's in uh, a terrible slump, though, to finish the season. Well, yeah, I think that's the problem. I think that when the pitchers get familiar with him, uh, maybe maybe not next year, but maybe the year after, um, whenever it is, he'll slow down. He'll, he'll still... He'll be a 290 to 310 hitter, maybe. Uh, that's what I predict, but he's not going to be a 350 hitter. He's no Miguel Cabrera. Not yet, anyway. I mean, he's still young. He's still 22, so he's got the tools. He definitely has the tools to be a very special player. He could be comparable, in my opinion, to a guy like Mike Trout, who, who you know is a five-tool guy. And I think he's got better tools than Trout, frankly. He's got a better arm than Trout. He doesn't necessarily catch the ball better than Trout, but he definitely has a better arm. He's faster than Trout. In my opinion, he has more power than Trout. Uh, so I think yeah, he, he's not he's not as polished as an, of an outfielder as Trout. He's definitely everyone uses this term, and I know I'm going to kill it, but uh, he's definitely raw still. Uh, he needs to he needs to develop, but it's worth it. I mean, he he could get to uh, just as many balls as Trout. I mean, might not be as graceful, but, you know, catching the ball is catching the ball. Uh, absolutely. I think I think he'll be an all-star next year, and he'll be a perennial all-star going forward. Now, it, it'll be interesting to see what the, how his teammates handle it going forward. If they start to get tired of it, he could become a locker room problem, you know, because it'll get to a point where guys will stand up for him as a teammate, say if he gets plunked or whatever. But at the same time, his teammates will start to tell him, hey, listen, we can't do this for you every time. We can't just start setting up for you every time just because you decide to throw your arms up and, and do whatever. He also, his his uh, his mentality and his uh, pride that he plays with really only works when you're winning. Um, you start losing and celebrating when it's not a home run gets old pretty quickly. Um, not saying not saying that uh, he would have had an inside the park home run, but maybe he would have. You don't know. Um, and and also on another note, the the payback that happened last night um, and the loss, it wasn't payback. That was everyone overreacted. There was two men on, no outs, and like a two two run game. There's no way they were they were hitting him. Um, no, no, no chance. There was that was a complete overreaction, and people need to just calm down and let them play the game. Absolutely. All right, so I think uh, I think that's it. If you guys want to chime in on the Yasiel Puig discussion, uh, hit us up on Twitter. We are at I underscore pressed underscore play, or, uh, or you could comment on our Facebook page, uh, and we hope to see you next time.